Hello everybody, Ron Brawls and I are together today. We've been walking in the park. Hello Ron. Hey Frank. And uh, it's a great place to walk. Of course my la last video was about uh, Canada geese and this place is loaded with them, isn't it? And Canada geese poop. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, what's new Ron? I'm with you. Well I got a segment coming up on the History Channel, Frank. That's um, great. I don't know if you, uh, well, I think you do know that I did some uh, pretty interesting stunt work when I was out in California and around and one of the things I did was jump off of the top of the Golden Gate Bridge with a parachute. I remember that. Yeah, and uh, the History Channel's contacted me, their Shockwave TV show, uh, about a second jump I made which I had some problems with and uh, they're going to do a segment on it. I've been notified by the producers that it's supposed to be uh, coming out August the 8th, that's not this coming Friday but next Friday. Uh, on their evening show, and I guess you'd have to check your local listings to see exactly when that happens. That's fantastic, Ron. And uh, how long ago was that, Ron? Gosh, Frank, that was uh, that was about 20 years ago. And Sounds it's amazing to me that they're still viewing that video. I kind of call myself the godfather of extreme because we were doing that stuff a lot. Oh yeah, you ago. were you yeah. were ahead of the curve on that. Yeah, and we were also professionally taping yeah. it so yeah. we got we got quite a few things yeah. that we did that well we you went off. to California and you did some uh, some interviews for the History Channel didn't you uh, and they were going to intersperse the, yeah, the footage we, from they, that they, they flew me out and put me up in a hotel got me a car and uh, we, we um, probably shot about seven or eight hours of stuff and they broke that down I think it's going to be a 20 minute segment so it'll be interesting to see how it turns out can't wait I'm I'm really anxious to see it Ron yeah it's going to be a lot of fun uh, you know we were talking when we were walking a while ago. Um, I don't know exactly where I'm going to go with this. We have talked about it briefly. And when I mentioned to you about the astronaut who had been talking about the, the UFOs, uh, Ron and I had just briefly, I knew Ron had some information, and I've been trying to... Uh, get him to release that information and I think you're about ready to do that is that right yeah it's it's funny when you hear an astronaut talking about the aliens have in fact visited the <laughs> the earth uh, several times and they just decided that uh, we weren't quite their cup of tea or whatever and they left that's uh, that's curious because I remember back in 1977 I was going to school in Chicago I was actually attending the Illinois Institute of Technology on the south side of Chicago and I would often travel down to the University of Chicago, which was a little farther south, and uh, have coffee, visit with friends, or, or whatever down there. And I was in a coffee shop one evening um, in autumn, I believe, of 1977 or somewhere thereabouts. It was just me and maybe the person behind the bar uh, attending to the, uh, serving the drinks and stuff. And one more gentleman, and we were watching TV, and it was a local newscast about some UFOs that appeared in Wisconsin. I can't remember exactly. It was two or three different cities. A bunch of people had seen uh, UFOs in certain cities, and they'd called in, and, and they actually did a newscast on it. And uh, while the reporter was uh, was saying, okay, in Fond du Lac or wherever, there, there were three guys who were out mowing their yard, and they saw this uh, unidentified flying. And while these, uh, while these reports were being given by this reporter, there was an older gentleman, probably in his 70s, over in the corner. And every time this guy would say something about UFOs are uh, being seen in Fond du Lac, he would just laugh. And he'd just shake his head and laugh and laugh and laugh. And this happened two or three times because there was about three or four different sightings in Wisconsin. And every time the reporter would talk about a, a sighting, the guy would go, ha, oh, and he'd throw his hand down and laugh. <laughs> and finally, just had a conversation, we were the only ones in there, I said, so I take it you don't believe in UFOs? And he said, no, do you? And he said it in this really pronounced German accent. I mean, it was obvious it was German, Austrian, or Swiss, or something like that. And so anyway, uh, I said, well, I have to tell you, there's a lot of things in the sky that, uh, you know, are unidentified, and they're flying in their objects, so that's the definition of a UFO. And, uh, and he said, well, there, there's a lot of things out there that are unexplained, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're, they're extraterrestrial. And I said, what do you mean by that? And he kind of jumped up, and he came over there and sat down beside him, and he started talking. And uh, 
over the course of the evening, he, uh, he led me to believe that he had information that UFOs were in fact not extraterrestrial at all. They were simply, uh, in many cases, guises that were given to the citizens of the United States in order to, to ferret out certain individuals who, after World War II, were coming to the United States in, 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 from Russia or other countries around the world. And the Cold War, they just started trying to figure out whether or not they could make these spies uh, show themselves to the government officials. And UFOs, they figured, were, were going to be a good way to do that. And they were trying to ferret them out with that uh, story. Well, I, I told him about Roswell. I said, well, at Roswell uh, in, in, in New Mexico in 1947, supposedly we had an alien ship crash with and bodies were found. And he just bent over, doubled over, you know, almost <laughs> belly laughing at that. He said, yeah, it all goes back to the source. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, let me tell you a story about Roswell if you'll come back here next Sunday at 1 p.m. And with that, he kind of turned around and he walked toward the door and he just looks at me and he goes, you really want to know about UFOs in Roswell? Meet me back here. Well, how long did you meet with him, Ron? There was probably about another three or four weeks. Uh, every Sunday afternoon at 1 p.m. we'd meet in this place and every... Uh, Every Sunday we'd start talking about this stuff, and, his, and over time, I don't. It come it come to me to be understood by me that he was here actually before World War II, and he was somehow involved in jet propulsion. And when it was time, when the war started, when Hitler invaded Poland, he wanted to go back to to Germany, but the government wouldn't let him. He just knew too much about jet propulsion and rocketry, as he called it. He didn't call it jet propulsion; he called it rocketry, right. and. Um, they, they wouldn't let him go, and they actually made some threats against his family in order to keep him here. So he was bitter about that for, for a long, long time. And consequently, having been bitter at the United States and being involved in some, some higher level uh, intelligence stuff, uh, he just told me over these three or four different meetings stuff that's pretty astounding. But in the context of what's happened recently, and by that I mean um, stuff that's happened uh, in the Soviet Union, uh, fairly recently that led me to believe that the stuff that I thought was just some old man babbling along was actually there was quite a bit of truth to it.